Hi everyone, Tim Moore here. It's one of my absolute favorite times of the year. It's late summer. It, that means vertical jigging for lake trout. In this video, I headed up to Lake Champlain for my annual kayak fishing trip. This year, unfortunately, I had to go by myself. Thanks COVID, but uh, made the best of it. Went up there, brought the Autopilot 136 up with me and did some vertical jigging for a couple of days. I absolutely smashed the fish and there are a boatload, no pun intended, of fish catches on this video, but more importantly, I spent a lot of time talking about where I look for lake trout, the, my, my gear setups, my rods and reels and leaders and knots, some of the lures that I used, the jigging techniques that I used. I really focused a lot on the, on the how-to aspect of that. So I caught a lot of fish, I covered a lot of information. It's a little bit of a long one. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Swimming right at me. Couldn't even barely keep up with it. Feels good. Yeah, feels good. I like it. Oh, hey. I think it just burped. This fish wants to be on the other side of the boat. Current or what? I'm gonna climb to oblige. There it is. That's not huge. Nice fish, but healthy looking. Not a giant. Nice. Well, bigger than I thought. <laughs> Pretty big fish. That'll do. Boy, there's a bunch down here. Really active fish. This is what I've been looking for is these active fish. Nice fish there on that Elias V shad, probably 28 inch fish. Swimming up. You better, it's really small. No, oh, he's swimming up. Not really small. No, I can't lift him really. Oh, 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 oh man, 
<laughs> Hang on. This is a big fish. Oh. He went down 15 feet. 20. been fishing kind of inside turns oh, and I moved outside to the outside of this steep break adjacent to really deep water not that they're down in that really deep water but they can be as deep as they want and come up on this edge and that's where this fish was feels like a good one, unless it's hooked funny, which happens a lot. Even if it's hooked funny, it's still a good fish. So there are generally only one or two kind of places that I look for lake trout in the summertime. Deep water is, is obviously, but there's structure. It's either drop-offs or basins, like big basins. Like on Lake Winnipesaukee, we fish in a basin that's 157 feet deep. But I'm always fishing the edges, so there's definitely structure that I'm looking for. I'm looking for any, any humps, any little points that stick out underwater, any little inside turns, any place with a little shelf above it, any place that bait fish might hide that lake trout are going to want to congregate, that going to want to cruise up on to look for bait, food, those are the places that I that I go to. I kind of gravitate towards those locations and I'll cruise around them and sometimes the depth will change a little bit but those areas, those underwater points and drop-offs, little inside turns on drop-offs, those are the places that I look for but always associated with with steeper drop-offs. So if you're familiar with Navionics and you zoom into that sonar charts layer you get those one foot contours when those lines are really close together those are the places that that I look for especially if there's a flat spot where there are few or no lines and then maybe a point or an inside turn uh, or even just a drop off where the lines are really close together and they drop down into deep water those are the places that I check first I'll check places in between them, but those are what I gravitate to. Those are where I catch the majority of my fish. Get a measurement on this fish yet. I'm going to right now. 30 and a half. That'll do.
felt a tick. He just smashed it into the bottom. Another decent one. You want to keep up with those head shakes. Put pressure on them. You want to make sure you've got heavy enough leaders and line that when they start to really head shake, you can start to really crank down on them because you want to minimize those head shakes. Don't let them get too crazy because they'll throw the lure right out of their mouth. Right there, son of a gun. Ugh. Right, I could see it. That oh, sucks. And I like traveling to other places because it is currently 12 10 p.m. and I've got active lake trout under me and one on the line which is almost unheard of on Winnipesaukee they just shut down in the middle of the day this time of year fish just cruising through here. <coughs> this isn't a giant, but it'd be big in Winnipesaukee. Very big fish in Lake Winnipesaukee. Actually, this is a very big fish in general that just didn't fight. Oh, I get that weird, I don't know if it's a whirling's disease here or what, but everybody thinks it is in Winnipesaukee and they've never tested one positive for whirlings. It's pretty common, but. They said everyone they've had submitted has been sent out for testing, has tested negative for whirlings. Funky looking fish. I'm gonna get a picture of that one. Got him, but got him. Just fish just keep coming through and keep coming through. And every time I reel it up, two or three more fish will come in. Active fish up off the bottom. I know they're feeding. I just can't leave them. But I'm going to run out of card space on my GoPros. So this is going to be it. This isn't a very big fish. This is probably the smallest one of the trip. Yeah. 
and it's got a lamprey on it. So let's see if we can't help him out by getting rid of that lamprey. off there it's killing me oh, lamprey let go free pass today luckiest lamprey in the lake right now guy. Cute one. All right. That'll do. Oh my god. See, this is what happens. Get the fish down here now. <coughs> All fired up. Coming right up there, just turning on. So there are three main techniques that I like to use when I'm jigging lake trout in the summertime. Bottom bouncing, like I'm doing now, where I cast it out as far as I can, let it sink to the bottom, and then jig it back, bouncing it along the bottom all the way back in. The key with that is keeping your line tight. And when I jig up, I reel down so that my line tightens up fairly quickly because they hit it on the drop. And as soon as I feel it hit bottom, I jig it again. So it's just bouncing back along the bottom. My other favorite technique is to drop to the bottom, bounce it a couple times, and then just start reeling. At a pretty good clip, not burning it up, but ripping it up pretty good. Back to the all the way to the surface. You gotta you gotta bring it all the way to the surface because they'll hit it sometimes 20 feet below the boat. And then just straight jigging, where I just drop down and just vertical jig like I would a spoon or anything else. Those are the three techniques. Right now I'm bottom bouncing. The water's warm. It's warm really far down. So this morning they would chase it and hit it on the way up. But they're not really doing that even when I retrieve it when I get done with my bottom bouncing and I go to retrieve it I'm not getting any bites on the retrieve Everything's coming really close to the bottom. It's late morning So it's just that finicky time of day But the bottom bouncing is probably one of my favorite techniques, but I will fish all of them because One will work really good for sometimes just an hour and then all of a sudden they'll stop hitting it But they'll start hitting it on the retrieve if you bottom bouncing or sometimes they'll hit it when you're just jigging and it's really nice if you have a group of people with you because everybody can just kind of switch it up and, and you'll figure out quickly what's working when you're alone like I am today it takes a lot longer to figure out which technique is gonna work the best which is gonna trigger them to bite the fastest because I've got to I have to do everything for a while before I know that the smaller the profile and the heavier the lure the quicker it's gonna get down to the bottom the quicker it gets down to the bottom, the more time you spend in the strike zone as opposed to a lighter lure that takes longer to sink or something bigger, like I was saying with the, those bigger bodied shads and the lighter heads, takes longer for it to sink. Even in between all of your jigs, it's going gonna, it's gonna to flutter down slower. Sometimes that's good, but generally you want to get your lure down into the strike zone as quick as possible. Another reason is current. Today I have some current. It's coming out of the south a little bit. It's not real fast, but it's current. It's enough to carry my jig towards me and when I cast up current. And so I don't have as much 
real estate once it hits the bottom it's closer to the kayak than i would like it there's nothing i can do about it if i cast down current so it pulls my lure away it takes longer for the lure to settle back down on the bottom because i'm keeping my line tight in between jigs so i can feel those bites on the fall so it's not falling as quickly it's taking longer because the current's pushing it out so you've got to figure out which direction is going to work best you know if jigging towards me with the current is working best i can fish a lighter lure because it'll sink a little bit quicker get down there so i can fish the bottom and fish it on my way back if the current if they're if they're hitting it on against the current with a retrieve against the current then i'm going to want the heaviest lures that i can get if i'm going to cast up current uh, and or cast down current and retrieve against it i'm going to need something heavier with a small profile Today. Got a few. Yep. How about you guys? It's been pretty slow for us. We picked up a couple of them super early, but yeah, we, uh, I, had some, I had some motor troubles, so we're just running off from the, uh, the trolling motor right now. But oh no! I've had, I've, had some, I've had a few bites recently, but not uh, not having a ton of loss. Using swim swim tails or? Yeah, those and metals. Yep. Yeah, yep. I got Yeah, it's a big one. Oh, good luck, guys. Wow, that's a big fish. This is a big one. Yep, this is a big one. Oh, yeah. Either that or it's hooked funny, but I don't think it is. I think this is a big one. Maybe not. That's the one we want. Yeah. Hooked in the fin. <laughs> uh, 
That's a nice fish. talk a little bit about the gear and how everything is set up that I've been using on this trip. Uh, my spinning rod, the main spinning rod that I used, this is a Daiwa Tatula. It's a 7 foot 2 medium fast action. It's their shaky head rod. Um, it's got a really, it's super light really nice fast tip on it it's perfect for vertical jigging I mean I have a one ounce lure on here and it's barely loading the rod up so it's got a nice fast action good backbone handles these bigger fish and I've paired it with a, uh, a ballistic this is a 3000 4000 D ballistic with 30 pound Daiwa J braid x8 grand this is a light gray and on that I have a 15 pound test fluorocarbon leader. This one is about seven feet long. It used to be 10, but from changing lures, I like to direct tie. When I'm fishing for lake trout, I do not like a, a, a quick link or a snap, swivel or snap or anything like that on there. Uh, and I tie my leaders to my braid with an FG knot, F as in Frank, FG. This one's a little bit frayed, but it's a nice thin knot, goes through the guides really well, and it's one of the strongest um, leader to, to braid knots that you can use when tied properly. So you really have to make sure, I'm not going to try to teach you how to tie an FG knot, there are enough tutorials out there right now, but the main thing is, is to tighten that, to cinch that knot down when it's done and get, get a nice thin profile to that knot. And then a direct tie. And on this one, I've been fishing mostly um, shads. This is the the Elias V Mackinac. This is the one ounce blue and chartreuse. This one's pretty beat up. It's caught a lot of fish today. And also uh, fishing caught a couple of fish on saltwater assassin um, sea shads. This is a purple the albino shad on a three quarter ounce jig head with a five out hook got to be a good heavy hook because these fish you got to get a good hook set and they will uh, they will straighten the hook the bait cast setup that I'm using which is strictly vertical jig I don't do much casting with it it's a it's a little foreign for me I can do it I can cast and bottom bounce but this is the setup that I just drop straight to the bottom and this one is a little bit more specialized the rod is the Daiwa Harrier slow pitch jigging rod if you've seen one of these, you'll notice that it doesn't quite look right. And I'll explain why in a minute. I put a, a Lexa 400 on here. This is the, the new one with the T-wing. Really nice, nice consistent line wraps. It comes off the spool really nice. So, especially for vertical jigging, dropping straight down, it comes off the spool much better. Um, certainly cast with it. I, I've done some casting with it. Back to the rod. I really, really like these Harrier slow pitch rods. They're super thin. They really remind me of the discontinued Proteus SS. Very similar size and action and uh, length. And lots of guides. Really good. This so this one here. This is a six six medium heavy. This this um, this rod is is rated for a three hundred gram jig, which is five ounces maybe more no I think it's closer to 10 300 grams I, I, I can't remember the math off the top of my head I just drew a blank anyway it, it'll it'll handle a really heavy jig still got a really nice bend to it though however sitting down in a kayak this rod comes I'm gonna guess 8 or 10 inches longer than this one here is uh, it's got a really long handle because slow pitch jigging you put the rod under your armpit and you jig really fast well, 
put this rod under your armpit sitting in a kayak with it, with it really long and it keeps the reel way out here and it really affects the action when I'm trying to jig. I can't make those nice little pops that I want to because the rod's too far away and my, my wrist gets tired. So I went online and I bought some of these butt ends, rod butts, with a half inch inside diameter and I cut this rod down with a Dremel. And so just to give you an idea, from the back of the reel seat to the finished end is 11 and a half inches. I could have gone to 12, uh, but that's the finished end. Well, there's about an inch of foam here. So I cut this rod down so that it's about, uh, about 10 inches. And then I put the rod butt on 10 inches, I believe so. I measured that it went down inside it uh, maybe it goes inside two inches so I cut it two inches um, longer than what was going to be seen and I epoxied it on and it's made a really really nice vertical jigging rod I've used it for fluke I've used it for sea bass I've caught lake trout on it you saw a couple in the early uh, in the video uh, I caught on this setup here I've got again Daiwa J braid x8 grand 30 pound blue uh, I just wanted to change it up. I don't really care. Uh, I thought it might be a little easier to see. My eyes are starting to get uh, a, little, a little old, I guess, and uh, I thought it would be a little easier. Is that a good 12 pounds? Yeah, I'd guess that. Jim, right? Yep. Yeah. I, don't think I, I don't think I've seen you up here before. I've, I've seen your shows. Uh, I usually come up every August in my kayak. Yep. Another big. Come here. Fish is a 
load. <clears throat> Give you a look at it. Big hump head. Wow, that one was ready. 